then um, I will stay, stay on for a little bit and then I will leave um, and Don will continue to support you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to uh, start today uh, with a land acknowledgement. Um, I am calling in today from my home office um, on the Okanagan Silks Territory. This is unceded and stolen territory. It has been um, the, the home of the Silks people for many, many years, thousands upon thousands of years. Um, I'm incredibly thankful to the stewardship of the lands that they have done so that we may all uh, enjoy these lands here in, in the beautiful Okanagan. Uh, my name is Caitlin Mitchell. I'm Director of Services with KCR Community Resources. Um, and I'm very excited today to introduce um, a little bit uh, about the RRT program, the Refugee Readiness Team um, project. We, the R Ready, Refugee Readiness Fund um, was a fund allocated by the government dedicated to support those fleeing war, both from Afghanistan and the Ukraine. Um, and as a result of this funding, the refugee response team for the Thompson Okanagan Kootenays was created. KCR is the host organization and works together with five other organizations throughout the region um, to support um, newcomers coming to the community. Um, we developed an action plan as a result of consultation with many different stakeholders in our communities in order to, again, best support these individuals who will be relocating and, and arriving in our communities. We're very thankful for the funding that the Ministry of Municipal Affairs has provided us uh, to be able to offer these services um, to the community members. So I'd like to take an opportunity to introduce Bikurjan. Did I say that correctly? Perfectly, thank you. All right, thank you. Bikurjan is um, a certified translator with the Society of Translators and Interpreters of BC. And today he's going to do a presentation on the best practices for professional interpreters. Um, just before we get started, you will have noticed um, just a couple housekeeping items that we will be recording the session today um, so that it will be available afterwards. Um, at the very end of the session, there will be um, a few questions, a little short sort of quiz to ensure um, that you have been able to take away some of the great information that Bacurjan, Bacurjan is going to, my apologies, um, is going to provide to you today. And there will also be a couple survey questions at the very end. Um, again, just to make sure um, we receive a little bit of feedback so that we can continue to improve the programming. All right, so I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much for this um, nice introduction, Caitlin. Um, <clears throat> hello again. Um, uh, we're repeating this uh, workshop, uh, but um, I assure you I have always uh, extra uh, words or different things to, um, uh, to say. So um, I uh, believe you will find um, today's version um, uh, informative as well. Um, we, uh, people who um, speak uh, more than one uh, language, um, find it, um, find ourselves in a position to uh, help others when they um, cannot communicate. And um, whether uh, we are a professional interpreter or, um, you know, a, a layman or someone who is doing something else, um, people sometimes approach us uh, to ask uh, us to interpret for them. So um, those who speak two languages, um, either you know um, well or not so well, um, somehow in their lives um, interpret it, and and in the future they will do that. Uh, so it's good to have some information about uh, professional uh, interpretation. And, and I designed this um, for mostly um, the um, uh, members of the Society of Translators and Interpreters um, quite a few years ago. Um, many people joined the, um, the society to become um, accredited uh, and, and they come with um, a certain level of, 
uh, information and experience, but their information and experience can be different um, uh, from what we are expected to do in North America. So this presentation um, aims at uh, bringing uh, the knowledge level to um, uh, the uh, expected um, level in North America. Actually, um, this is not only true for North America. These uh, best practices um, uh, recommendations uh, are universal and you will find it useful no matter where you go. So um, what is interpreting? Um, it's verbal translation, uh, literally, but I like this definition among um, uh, others, faithful, complete and neutral transfer of oral messages from one language into another. Uh, there are many different areas uh, where we um, operate, court interpreting, conference interpreting, healthcare interpreting, business interpreting, interpreting in disaster situations, interpreting in conflict zones, refugee interpreting. They, are, they were all actually um, under um, the title um, community interpreting. And then in time, um, uh, professional needs required that we branch out and specialize in different areas. Um, in, in most cases, uh, it's not uh, easy to be uh, competent in all these areas. Conference interpreting requires um, special training and experience uh, because it's, um, it's, its requirements are different from um, court interpreting. Again, court interpreting requires knowledge in the legal system, uh, the, uh, the law system in uh, the country where we um, operate, and without knowing that it's really um, difficult to uh, do a, a good job. Healthcare interpreting is the same. Um, and I've been interpreting in, uh, in uh, the business field, and I find it completely different from the rest. No matter what, um, it's good to have information in each area and see uh, if we can develop um, competency, knowledge, uh, and experience in uh, as many um, uh, fields as possible so that we can provide our services uh, to those in need uh, of our um, uh, services. Um, interpreting in disaster situations um, is a, a different area that you have to um, uh, learn about. And, and conflict zones and refugee interpreting, these are all sensitive uh, areas. None is less important than the other one. Everyone, each one of these fields uh, is extremely important and require the same um, uh, attention and, and uh, professionalism. Uh, why should you consider certification in court, community, and me medical interpretation? Uh, because certification creates a new class of qualified and certified language professionals. Now, um, Canada is a um, multi-cultural uh, um, country, and um, it, it, it stems from uh, the uh, huge uh, number of uh, new immigrants um, coming into the country. Um, some of these people are proficient um, in two languages and others uh, are not. And most of the time, these people need help. In so many different areas, these people need help. Um, Canada also receives a lot of um, immigrants who are competent in, uh, um, uh, in translation and interpretation. And those people uh, with um, competency should um, or would want to use their um, skills and get um, accredited in Canada so that they can um, pursue um, a career in this field. Uh, that's why um, they should consider um, getting accredited, getting certified as um, a translator, um, as a court or community uh, and medical uh, interpreter. And this is a, a serious uh, uh, business and it's a, a very serious career uh, for anyone who has the language skills to consider.
Um, this is um, uh, about the Society of Translators and Interpreters of British Columbia. Um, I'm a member of this society uh, since 2009. I came to Canada in 2005 and I wasted four precious years uh, before I joined this um, society. It's a nonprofit society, so I'm not really promoting um, anything commercial here. Um, it's it's um, a member uh, funded, uh, it's a member funded institution. So um, joining the society, um, nobody specific uh, benefits, but you benefit and your community benefits. So um, you should consider um, joining the society unless you are already a, a, a member. Um, I, uh, I found um, the society uh, online and um, went through their admission um, uh, process and I got certified um, in 2010 uh, in one combination and then I got certified in the other combination. Unfortunately, there is no certification in my language um, uh, in um, a court community medical interpreting. So um, I have not been certified um, as an interpreter. That's why when I introduce myself, I introduce myself as a, a, a professional interpreter, not a certified interpreter. Uh, certified, the uh, title certified is a protected one in British Columbia. Only those who are certified by the Society of Translators and Interpreters may introduce themselves as certified. So since uh, I am not certified um, uh, as an interpreter, I only introduce myself as um, a professional uh, interpreter. Anyways, long story short, it is um, uh, very much recommended that you consider joining the Society of Translators. Here I have three links, uh, very useful uh, links for you to um, go to and uh, obtain information about uh, membership. Um, admission policy um, is uh, uh, one that you have to um, read very carefully and understand and contact the society if you have any questions. And uh, the application process is also um, uh, on the website. Um, uh, there is certification in court community and me medical um, interpreting uh, through STIBC. You have to be a member of the Society of Translators uh, and Interpreters of BC to be able to take the certification exam. So it's uh, a must to join the society first and then go through the certification process. Um, institutionalizing the community and medical interpreting in Canada was important and it coincided to um, the time that I started to work for the society. As I said, I joined the society in 2009 and the same year I got employed by the society and I got um, heavily involved in um, everything about the society. And um, the uh, work um, uh, started in 2012 uh, because there were um, private uh, initiatives trying to um, print certificates and, and um, certify people uh, across North America, not only in Canada, but in the US as well. And, um, and, and we had to do something about that because um, the uh, pro profession was going to be usurped by um, uh, private institutions. Uh, so an institution had to, um, to take over and, uh, and it had to be uh, us, the Society of Translators and Interpreters uh, with the umbrella institution sitting. So um, work uh, continued to be done in 2013. And finally, uh, we um, prepared the exams in 2017 and offered the certification exam for the first time in 2017 in community and medical interpreting. Uh, we already uh, had um, certification exam in court interpretation. Uh, in the past, they had um, uh, an exam in uh, uh, conference interpreting, but um, it was updated, and again, um, uh, both CITIC, the Umbrella Institution, and STIBIC um, are um, uh, nonprofit um, uh, organizations. Um, member initiatives uh, are important. Um, you have to join the society and um, uh, bring your knowledge and, and experience and, um, and, and uh, contribute. Um, 
long story short, uh, in 2017, uh, we introduced uh, the community and medical interpreting um, certification together with uh, the um, certification in um, uh, court interpretation this way. Um, guess what? Those pr uh, private initiatives um, across North America, not only in Canada, uh, but the U.S., they all disappeared in the meantime. Now, um, this is really uh, curious that I want to share um, a remark by Klaus uh, Schwab, founder of uh, the uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, in the new world, he says, it is not the big fish which eats the small fish, it is the fast fish which eats the slow fish. So whatever we are going to do, we have to act um, as quickly as possible, whether this is uh, an institution uh, or an individual. Uh, we have to take initiative um, as quickly as possible. So as the Society of Translators and Interpreters, we uh, secure title protections in these um, uh, six uh, titles. So no one else but the members of the Society of Translators may introduce themselves as uh, a certified translator, certified conference interpreter, certified terminologist, certified court interpreter, certified medical interpreter and certified uh, community interpreter. That's why the society's work was uh, very important. And uh, interestingly, after December 15, 2015, uh, the Society Act changed and they um, uh, stopped granting title protection to any institution. So we had to act very quickly at that time. Uh, interpreting is a, an ancient profession, um, I, and we, we don't have an exact date for when uh, it started, but it must have started as soon as uh, communities speaking two different languages started to interact. Um, but this is an interesting um, um, art depiction from ancient Egypt. Uh, and um, this is uh, from the tomb of Haramab um, at Saqqara. It's a region in um, uh, uh, ancient uh, Egypt, uh, dating to uh, 1330 uh, BCE. Uh, two interpreters um, interpreting for two different parties. It's really curious that uh, to see uh, that our profession um, was institutionalized um, thousands of years ago. So it's not a new profession. It's been out there uh, for uh, millennia. Um, while um, the, there is work to um, uh, create uh, professional interpretation and uh, education training, uh, you also have imposters. Uh, this is from um, Nelson Mandela's memorial service uh, in 2013, a fake sign language interpreter appeared right next to the US president at that time. Uh, and, and it was not, well, maybe the um, sign language professionals uh, immediately noticed that, but there uh, was no one else uh, to stop this imposter to, um, uh, to perform uh, uh, his, his fake um, uh, service. Uh, but uh, we do get, unfortunately, uh, unqualified people um, uh, get involved in, in this field. Um, this is a, a movie clip. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, I um, was not able to um, uh, get this work um, on the presentation. So the link is here. I um, um, encourage you to um, go um, uh, online and uh, watch it um, on YouTube. Uh, the, the short uh, clip is about, um, uh, from a movie um, called Desert Flower. Uh, the whole movie is worth watching uh, and it's also available on YouTube. Uh, in the movie, in the short uh, clip is uh, a patient in a hospital with a doctor. Uh, um, the doctor, um, um, diagnoses the problem and um, uh, offers to help, but um, he's unable to communicate with the patient and um, they find a, a nurse uh, who can speak the same language um, uh, with the, uh, the patient and they use that person's help. And that person, instead of interpreting 
pretending uh, uh, that he was interpreting uh, says um, outrageous things to the uh, patient. So this is a, a very good example uh, of uh, the, uh, the problems uh, with using unqualified, um, uneducated um, interpreters. However, this is so widespread and in certain situations, it's inevitable. Yet as professional interpreters, we have to advocate and, and promote professional uh, translation and interpretation so that uh, problems that we see in a situation like this um, uh, doesn't have to happen all the time. Um, because translators and interpreters can save lives. Uh, we are not just helping um, two parties to communicate. There are the times that uh, our job can uh, save lives. And this, unfortunately, um, was, um, has been proven uh, by uh, a lot of grim experiences in the history of um, humankind. Um, I just want to give you this example um, from uh, 1945, end of the World War II. Um, the word uh, mokusatsu in um, um, Japanese um, has apparently um, several meanings. One of them is to ignore, and the other one is to refrain from comments at the moment, and or it means withhold comment. So uh, either depending on the context and uh, the sentence that you use, it can say, I'm ignoring you, or um, in a different context, you mean I refrain from um, comments at the moment, and or you mean I withhold comment. I'm not going to comment about it uh, at the moment. Um, when this uh, distinction uh, between the meanings uh, is not taken into consideration, um, you can have disasters. Of course, I'm not claiming that uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima disasters um, uh, were um, the result of um, mistranslation, misinterpretation completely. Uh, I'm sure there were other uh, realities behind them. Uh, however, that was the context the um, uh, allied countries used. Um, they simply said um, Japan didn't surrender unconditionally. And, um, and this is the only way we can um, force um, Japan to surrender. Uh, but one of the uh, claims was that um, they ignored our uh, warnings. Um, that means uh, translation and interpretation um, are extremely important in any situation. There is no unimportant uh, case when it comes to um, our work. Disaster. Emergencies, refugee seeking, um, these are uh, the most difficult areas. Um, my country, my home country, Turkey, uh, is going through a, a huge disaster at the moment. Um, and um, they need a lot of help. Um, and, and in a situation like that, as I um, um, teach in my um, uh, workshops, uh, people use whoever they can find. And most of the time, um, it's volunteers. Uh, most of the time, um, it's unqualified people, children uh, interpret, family members uh, interpret. Uh, in a war zone, uh, tribesmen um, interpret. Um, and um, they sometimes do more harm than good, or uh, they harm themselves. Um, uh, while trying to help um, other parties. That's why training and careful planning is uh, extremely important to uh, eliminate possible conflicts due to race, culture, religion, language, ethnicity, um, et cetera. Um, professionalization of community and medical interpreting um, comes with um, uh, some um, uh, ISO guidelines. Uh, they're not much different from uh, what we advocate. Um, they have uh, established eight um, ethical principles. 
accuracy and fidelity, um, confidentiality, impartiality, respect for persons, maintaining role boundaries, accountability, professionalism, and continued competence. Um, here I have some numbers. So we have um, seven uh, associations across um, Canada. Uh, there is one in each um, uh, province. Um, I didn't include it here, but um, Quebec also has one. Um, the, the number of certified people um, is actually small in either uh, court uh, or community and medical interpretation. So more people should join the society, more people uh, should pass the certification exam so that uh, we can promote the, uh, the uh, professional services our um, um, colleagues provide. Uh, if you're not familiar with the provincial and federal law system in Canada, criminal law, uh, civil law, you shouldn't um, attempt to interpret in court. Simply stay away from that. You will do more harm uh, than good. More importantly, you will um, get yourself discredited. It's not worth it. Um, stay within your competency and uh, do your best because um, we only operate with one uh, item, uh, our reputation. And, uh, and our reputation has to be intact and has to be uh, um, well respected so that we can continue providing uh, our services. When we are competent, we will do a good job and um, we will be praised for that. And then we will get more jobs. But when we don't do a good job, we will be discredited and uh, we won't be able to uh, operate. Uh, what is the difference between community and uh, court interpreters? Um, community interpreters usually uh, interpret consecutively. Um, they uh, are allowed to um, take notes. They uh, uh, sometimes do site translations. Uh, they should be um, aware of community uh, structure. Uh, they have to pay attention to uh, cultural um, sensitivities. Uh, and uh, they have to be knowledgeable uh, about the Code of Ethics for contra, um, court inter um, community interpreters. Um, work settings uh, are usually, um, uh, they are usually freelancers. They work independently. Uh, they work for, uh, with settlement agencies, education systems, government institutions. Um, sometimes they are asked to interpret um, for uh, the police forces. But um, that is usually an area where court interpreters um, should um, provide their services. Uh, medical interpreters are very similar, but um, uh, they also um, most of the time do consecutive interpreting, no simultaneous interpretation in um, medical and uh, uh, community interpretation. Um, site translation uh, is something um, they do frequently. Note taking is important. Uh, names, numbers, dates um, uh, can be uh, crucial. Uh, but most crucial here is the knowledge of medical terminology. Uh, again, uh, familiarity with Canadian health system and uh, terminology is important. Um, awareness of general medical procedures, uh, sensitivity to cultural differences, and the code of ethics for medical interpreters. Uh, the work setting is similar to um, uh, the uh, community interpreting. Um, they are uh, they work um, mostly independently. Uh, freelancers, um, healthcare settings, hospitals, clinics, doctors' offices, uh, rehabilitation centers, nursing homes, mental illness facilities, substance abuse clinics, and you can add more um, items to that. Uh, the inter Printing methods um, uh, have uh, improved uh, a lot um, in the last uh, several decades. Um, we provide services on site. Uh, we sometimes provide services by video remote um, uh, um, interpreting uh, devices and or over the phone. Um, but uh, we most of the time uh, interpret uh, uh, in uh, three major uh, methods, consecutive, 
that means right after um, the um, client speaks or the um, uh, administrator speaks, simultaneous um, at the same time. And site translation is um, um, translating from um, a piece of paper, um, uh, written information on a piece of paper. Uh, we do face-to-face -face telephone video uh, interpretation. So, um, and we need to be familiar uh, with uh, the online um, applications um, Zoom is uh, um, one of the most um, used um, application. Microsoft Teams um, was considered by the uh, BC um, uh, court services so uh, and, and refugee uh, board. So um, almost all of their uh, interviews and, and court hearings are done on Microsoft Teams. So you should get used to using that one. Uh, there is GoToMeeting and uh, Google Handouts and uh, quite a few others uh, are available. You need to, um, you, you don't have the chance to uh, pick and choose um, uh, which application that um, you want to use. It is chosen by the um, uh, uh, administration and, and we just need to learn how to use them and be ready uh, when we are asked to interpret uh, on one of those platforms. Uh, when I do online interpreting, um, this is uh, my screen usually. I don't uh, refer to um, a dictionary most of the time. Uh, my uh, vocabulary is good. I, I still um, uh, trust my memory. Uh, however, um, I. Um, I am um, at the um, luxury and convenience of my uh, workstation. So um, I, I usually um, open my dictionary on the right-hand side. And then uh, this is a Microsoft Teams um, um, hearing. Um, uh, uh, and, and I was interpreting for um, multiple people. So this is my um, uh, screen when I uh, do interpretation. Um, an interpreter uh, and an orchestra conductor have uh, a lot uh, in common. Um, uh, maybe an orchestra, orchestra con conductor is, uh, um, is doing his job um, openly. Everybody knows that he is conducting them. But uh, as an interpreter, uh, we are hidden um, conductors. Um, we need to uh, train uh, and manage the people that we um, uh, interpret for. Uh, we don't need to tell them that we are the conductor there, we are the manager there, but actually uh, without our help and without our professional um, uh, help, they won't be able to communicate. So um, at the beginning of uh, each session, we need to train uh, the parties on how uh, we work together. We don't usually tell them, um, you need to do this, you need to do that. We just explain to them how we work and uh, kindly ask that they, um, they follow our um, um, guidelines. Uh, interpreting for um, two people, is of course easy, but when you have multiple people, um, it's um, more challenging. So uh, you always need to keep them under control and make sure that they all do a good job so that you can do a good job so that everyone um, uh, benefits from the services that you provide. Uh, before interpreting, uh, you must understand both the vocabulary and the idea behind the message um, uh, that is given. So it is, focusing is of paramount importance here. Uh, when you interpret, um, you are disconnected from the rest of the world. You, your only focus is what is being said uh, on uh, each side by each party. Uh, so you have to understand what is um, uh, said you have to have a good command of uh, the vocabulary and the idea uh, of what is being said. We don't always interpret word for word. Uh, there are certain um, phrasal verbs, there are certain uh, idiomatic expressions that need to be interpreted 
uh, accurately, um, but in a different way in the other language. That's why we have to focus and understand the vocabulary and the idea behind that message so that we can do a, a good job. Um, to do that, uh, of course, we have to have a uh, familiarity with uh, the court community, medical interpreters, um, code of professional conduct. What are they? Uh, first, uh, faithful and accurate interpretation, primarily in terms of meaning, secondarily in terms of style, no embellishment, no addition, no omission. So we are not really dis describing what is being said. We are not really interpreting an um, an, an interpretation. We are actually verbally translating without uh, embellishing, without adding anything, without omitting anything. No explanation or uh, expression of opinion during interpretation. Um, if there is a misunderstanding, and, and you might uh, feel that there will be a misunderstanding uh, from the way the conversation goes, um, you continue doing your job. You don't need to explain, you don't need to uh, express your opinion. Let the two parties deal with that in between the two of them. Um, we have to remain impartial and avoid any appearance of bias or favoritism to any person. Um, it's, it's, it's our language, it's our people, it's, uh, we know a lot about them. Um, they might be lying, they might be exaggerating, um, uh, they might represent a political party that you hate, but those are all irrelevant uh, things uh, to a professional interpreter. You are there to interpret, so you have to remain impartial and uh, avoid any uh, bias or favoritism uh, to anyone. Uh, avoiding any real or apparent conflict of interest and informing the administrator or the interpreter scheduler of any possible conflict of interest. Um, sometimes um, you are um, hired to interpret for um, a party that um, you might not remember, but when you um, get to the facility to interpret, um, you uh, might remember or you might see that um, you know that person. So it might cause some kind of a conflict of interest. That's why in a situation like that, you need to let the administrator and, and or the interpreter scheduler know about that. And if they um, um, give you uh, the go ahead, then you can continue. Uh, but they have to know about uh, any uh, possibility of conflict of interest. Um, no advice or opinion giving to witnesses or other parties, no explanation of uh, proceedings. Again, you need to remember that you are there to interpret uh, what is said between the two parties. Um, you might, uh, not you might, you need to be knowledgeable about the, um, uh, the, the proceedings, how things are done, uh, but uh, that doesn't necessarily give you the authority to um, give advice or opinion uh, on that. You are there to interpret for um, uh, two parties and let each party do their part. And if there is uh, uh, advice to be given, let the relevant party um, give that advice. If there's an opinion uh, required, let uh, the two parties deal with it between the two of them. Keeping all assignment related information confidential, even when that information is not privileged information or required by law to be kept confidential. Now, it's, it's obvious that the information um, between um, uh, your um, client and um, the other party uh, is um, confidential. However, at the same time, uh, due to your position as an interpreter, it's privileged information because you are there as a professional and you have been given the privilege to be there to provide your professional services. So uh, pri privileged information is um, uh, somewhat different from confidential uh, information. It's standard that you have to keep that information um, uh, confidential. However, you have to remember that you are um, given privileges 
to be there. And that's why um, it is one step ahead of um, uh, confidentiality uh, that you consider um, that information uh, privileged. Uh, you have to always keep that in mind. Not discussing any aspect of the case with parties, witnesses, or any other person. Um, immediately inform the administrator anytime during an assignment if you feel you are unable to provide proper interpretation. Uh, we are human. Um, we might um, become um, um, sick uh, or um, lose our capacity to provide um, our services. If that is the case, no one, no, that's not the end of the world. Just let the parties know that you are unable to provide um, your services. Uh, you're not supposed to uh, provide um, less than perfect um, services. So whenever you feel that uh, that is not possible, let the parties know and uh, withdraw from that assignment. Uh, always appear on time for all assignments. Give interpreter scheduler advance notice if you're unable to attend so that another interpreter can be assigned and never assign or attempt to assign work to another interpreter. Um, things um, can happen and, and we might not be able to um, um, honor an assignment. Uh, and if we know that ahead of time, we should um, let the parties know about it, but do not contact another interpreter, another colleague um, to take it um, um, uh, on your behalf. If you are hired by an administrator and or uh, individual, you still adhere to the same code of conduct. Now, this is really curious. Um, you have to see the distinction between uh, hired uh, and work for. Um, yes, uh, sometimes institutions, sometimes individuals um, hire our services, but we don't work for them. We work with them. When you work for someone, you do as they ask you to do. However, in our line of business, we don't do as they wish us to do uh, per se. We, um, we do our job. Uh, we provide professional services on the basis of um, uh, professional interpreters' code of ethics, not on the basis uh, of uh, the uh, hiring party's needs and requirements. They have to understand that as well. That's why I, I um, pay a lot of attention to the definition of my work. I, you may hire me to interpret uh, for you, but I do not work for you. I work with you and I provide my services um, as a uh, freelance interpreter, and I have to adhere to the uh, code of conduct of um, the institutions, not expectations of individuals or just one administrator. Report to the interpreter scheduler at the conclusion of each assignment for any further instructions, including assisting with further negotiations or meetings, et cetera. Uh, don't just take off right after the assignment um, comes to an end. Wait for a few minutes and see if your um, help is going to be needed. Talk to the um, scheduler, talk to the uh, administrator, and let them know that your services uh, will be available uh, anytime in the future. Uh, and, and just show professional uh, attitude um, uh, after even, even after you um, completed your um, assignment. Always remember that you are accountable for complying with directions from administration and abide by their code of professional conduct. Try to find out the details of the code of conduct of the institution you provide interpretation um, services. Um, most of the time, these um, um, code, uh, codes of conduct uh, are very similar, and, and we are talking about them. Uh, however, um, if it is a new institution that you will be uh, providing your services, you might um, do an online search. I always do uh, um, an online search uh, before I go to an assignment, try to become familiar with that institution or organization. Um, uh, it also helps me to um, um, mentally uh, prepare myself for the assignment. 
uh, dress and conduct yourself in a manner consistent with the dignity of a professional and the institution you work with. Um, again, um, there is no um, uh, um, distinctive uh, rule for uh, a dress code, but you're expected to look um, uh, professional. So um, jeans are not really uh, what you're expected to um, wear in a, an assignment like that, unless it is, you know, um, a, a spontaneous uh, assignment. But always trying to be in um, um, in, in good uh, attire so that um, you uh, show your professionalism. Of course, uh, there are the times that you interpret in uh, um, very unusual situations uh, like this when I was interpreting for this um, power line um, company. Uh, this is a training session and I was not uh, prepared for that. I didn't expect to be uh, on top of a crane and um, I was cold and um, I had to get uh, extra warm clothes, uh, a toque, um, uh, some gloves maybe. So um, it was um, not good for me to, um, uh, to be there uh, without um, uh, proper um, uh, dressing. Uh, and, and here is another setting that I was um, interpreting. And, and positioning yourself in a, a place like this is important. So it's a helicopter, as you can see, I have um, uh, six people um, um, uh, on the helicopter and I position myself um, uh, in the middle so that I can interpret for um, all parties properly. Um, over the years, I developed my own note taking uh, techniques. Um, this is uh, one of um, uh, my note sheets um, that I um, uh, used um, uh, last year, I believe. And uh, so this is how I do, um, um, depending on uh, how um, I want to remember certain things, uh, I take notes and, and continue using the same sheet uh, um, I don't want to use multiple sheets so that I don't need to go back to um, the notes that I um, took uh, two minutes ago. So I try to um, uh, um, use the same sheet uh, or as um, a few sheets as possible so that I can use the same information when uh, it comes back. Uh, so you should also develop uh, your own note-taking um, techniques. Um, this is uh, a good one uh, if you want to uh, use it. But again, uh, depending on your needs and expectations, uh, you might develop your own uh, note-taking uh, uh, techniques. Um, I have some guidelines for professional interpreters here. Um, some of them will uh, be... Um, a repetition, but bear with me. Um, uh, it's worth going over them no matter what. Uh, before going to an assignment, if possible, try to find out the subject matter of the situation, ca case, disaster. Um, it's, you know, you have to prepare yourself mentally and, um, and physically. Uh, prepare any specific terminology you may need and ask to meet with the administrator and the person for whom you will be interpreting a few minutes before the session begins to brief them on how to work with an interpreter. Most of the time, um, uh, each party um, uh, will not know how to work with an interpreter. Uh, the person that you interpret uh, uh, for um, might think that you know everything about the subject matter, which is not true all the time. Even if you do know, uh, it's not your job to explain what the uh, uh, situation is. And the other party, uh, the administration, might uh, consider the same thing. Oh, you know uh, what needs to be done, then go ahead and do it. No, my job is not uh, to give provide information to the client on your behalf, but my job is to interpret for you. Uh, whatever you said is going to be interpreted to the to the other party, and whatever their response is is going to be um, uh, interpreted to you. So we have to be um, uh, we have to train them. Explain to them your role as an interpreter. Uh, explain your system of controlling the length of speech that you can interpret um, accurately. 
uh, most of the time, again, uh, they will not know uh, much about this, and um, especially in uh, in court um, uh, situations, uh, some um, um, uh, uh, clients or even some lawyers uh, sometimes uh, start um, shooting and they they speak. Um, uh, uh, uninterruptedly uh, uh, and and you know it it's it's difficult to control them so it's best that you um, let them know uh, about your uh, system uh, at the beginning so that they're aware of that uh, familiarize yourself with the person's speech pattern um, some people speak um, normally uh, by that, I don't mean other people speak uh, abnormally, but um, in my uh, latest court assignment, for instance, um, this person uh, reads from uh, his notes and his head is always down and uh, his voice is not really uh, clear. And um, there were um, several um, occasions I had to ask him to repeat. Um, yes, if necessary, of course, you're going to um, ask them to repeat. Uh, but um, I also try to improve my um, uh, my skills to uh, make sense of uh, the way he spoke. Uh, it's not it's not um, nice to ask the person to repeat every um, sentence or statement. Um, so you need to. Um, Pay attention, and that's our professional um, obligation. Remind parties that you will interpret everything they say. This is a very, very crucial um, uh, thing to um, to remember and to do. Um, in certain situations, people use um, inappropriate language, and they expect you not to interpret that you have to let them know that whatever is spoken is going to be interpreted. And they have to understand and know. And if they do uh, use fall language, um, they have to um, expect uh, the you know, consequences. Uh, but it's important that we warn them about the way we uh, work. Uh, some more guidelines for you. At the time of interpretation assignment, be well-groomed, dress in normal business attire. This is um, uh, seemingly not so important um, rule, actually uh, is very important. Um, again, we um, operate uh, with our brain. And uh, if our uh, brain is in good shape, we should be fine. But the brain, uh, most of the time, functions uh, depending on uh, uh, many other um, uh, 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 aspects of life. Um, you dress up uh, too warm in a um, um, hot place, your brain is not going to function well because it is distracted by the uh, heat. Um, your um, hair is not well organized and you keep scratching your head, um, you're not going to be able to do a good job. Uh, so uh, be well-groomed and dress in normal business attire is a good advice um, before you start an assignment. Uh, being punctual is important, but it's also important that uh, you arrive a little earlier than uh, the uh, interpretation um, session. Uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes if necessary, especially depending on the weather conditions, when it is um, snowy uh, and, uh, or rainy, uh, you might want to arrive a little earlier than uh, 15 minutes to climatize um, and get used to the atmosphere in the uh, interpretation um, uh, location. And this is true when you uh, are doing um, interpretation online. Just be ready in front of your computer uh, 15, 20 minutes before the assignment, just emotionally and mentally uh, uh, prepare yourselves uh, for this session. Uh, introduce yourself to the parties involved. Um, it's always good to uh, carry some business cards with you. Um, newcomers, um, people coming from different countries um, have names that are um, quite different from uh, what um, you come across in North America. Um, you don't have um, a lot of Michaels, Janes, and um, Johns 
uh, you have people like myself, Vicky John Tapira, uh, a name that um, North American uh, people um, would never hear otherwise. Um, so um, I always have some business cards. I know it's um, outdated now, but it is uh, important in our um, situation to have uh, business cards. And when I go to um, a, a facility to interpret, I always um, um, uh, introduce myself with uh, a business card so that they can see my name. Uh, it's easier for people to recognize our uh, name when they see it written. Inform the administrator if there is any issue of conflict of interest, if this can't be done in advance. We spoke about that. Just a reminder, if you are interpreting for a person, stand or sit next to him or her and interpret in a, a whisper so as not to disturb the proceedings. This is when you're interpreting uh, for multiple people, um, a group of people um, uh, you're interpreting, they are all speaking and you're interpreting for the client, then you um, uh, interpret in a whisper. But otherwise, if it is um, community or medical interpreting um, situation, um, um, you don't need to do that. Uh, and in uh, court situations too, um, unless it is um, a discussion between uh, the uh, judge and the prosecu prosecutor and or um, a, a lawyer, a counsel, um, you uh, are in control of the um, interpreting uh, process. And most of the time, uh, especially in courts, everything is recorded and your interpretation needs to go into record too. So. Uh, whisper is uh, um, rarely needed, uh, but when it is needed, you do that. But the crucial thing is that you sit uh, or stand next to the person that you will be interpreting for, because you are the voice of that person. And, and um, as the voice of that person, you always face the administrator while interpreting for um, that person. Uh, interpreting everything that a client says. Remember that only interpreter's words go on, on record. Uh, it is standard practice to record simple, um, simple proceedings now. Even in um, community settings, people do um, record. Um, so you have to remember and um, uh, adjust your voice accordingly. Uh, more guidelines, interpret only what is spoken in words. Allow the administrator to clarify gestures, etc. Somebody takes a deep sigh, you're not there to interpret that deep sigh. It can be uh, a frustrated sigh, it can be anything else. So you're not in a position to interpret that. Let the other, uh, let the two parties uh, deal with that between the two of them. Uh, be accurate in your in interpretation. Take time to fully comprehend what is being said and interpret it faithfully in the target language. Accuracy is more important than speed, though a good interpreter tries to keep up with the speed. Now, um, it is common knowledge that uh, novice drivers tend to uh, drive fast and um, novice uh, interpreters tend to um, interpret fast. Um, being quick is important, uh, but um, being accurate is more important. So take your time, don't rush, make sure that um, your interpretation is uh, complete and accurate. Always interpret in the first person, uh, speak clearly uh, in, a, in, in a voice that is audible to everyone uh, and is recordable. So you are the voice of the client, you are not yourself. Uh, as the interpreter, you're the third person. And, and if you need to uh, express something um, or uh, explain something, the interpreter doesn't understand or the interpreter didn't hear what is spoken. The interpreter requests that you uh, repeat your um, sentence, please. But otherwise, you're, you're the first person. You're the voice of the person that you, you are interpreting for. Do not elaborate upon or explain a question to the parties involved. That is the administrator's task. We mentioned that. And then to be accurate, you should take notes of names, addresses, dates, and numbers unless you are asked not to. 
Uh, in rare situations, you are asked not to take any notes, but in most situations, um, you're allowed. Uh, however, at the end of the session, um, uh, before even you are asked to hand over your notes to the administrator, you should uh, voluntarily do that. Um, in in uh, certain um, uh, assignments, um, the administrators expressed their appreciation when I did that because they were not aware of that. However, uh, going back to the uh, confidentiality um, issue, uh, the information um, that uh, transpires in front of us is privileged information. And we are not allowed to take that information along uh, and, and endanger um, that information in any way. So if they have notes, just hand them over. If I do this online, um, I simply let the uh, parties know that I'll be uh, shredding my notes um, um, right after the uh, assignment or sometimes uh, in front of them on camera. Do not translate proper names, spell out unusual names. Uh, more guidelines, ask for clarification or repetition whenever you are in doubt. Do not ignore an unknown term, nor give it a doubtful paraphrase. Direct all questions to the parties in the third person, the interpreter requests. Um, this is uh, very, very crucial. <clears throat> Again, uh, we are language professionals. We are not um, uh, machines, and uh, there are the times that uh, we might not hear uh, very well, or we might not understand everything clearly. If you are in doubt, um, don't uh, uh, don't ignore um, that, and and just make sure that you get um, the right uh, information so that you can uh, provide a, an accurate and complete interpretation. Uh, if a word is unfamiliar to you, request permission uh, from the parties to have it clarified or to consult a dictionary. Uh, if you made an error, inform the administrator so that the records may be corrected. Um, sometimes um, we um, uh, unintentionally uh, make mistakes. Sometimes we misunderstand without really realizing that we misunderstood. Um, it's uh, from the context of the conversation, uh, we uh, might realize eventually that we misinterpreted um, two minutes um, ago. Uh, let the parties uh, immediately know about that misinterpretation. It is normal. Uh, it's, of course, not wanted, but it is sometimes inevitable that we um, make a mistake. And if that happens, the best thing to do is to let the parties know about that and um, get it corrected. Trust me, you earn people's respect by doing that. They will not um, criticize you for making a mistake, but they will praise you for uh, your attempt to uh, correct yourselves. If anyone questions your interpretation, do not get into an argument with that person. Stand by your interpretation if you know it to be correct. Acknowledge a mistake if you made one. Let the court administrator handle the situation should disagreement or challenges persist. Um, I always um, uh, um, give this example um, when I um, talk about this item. Uh, I was interpreting for a lawyer and uh, his um, client and a third party joined on the telephone. And, um, and the uh, client disagreed with my uh, interpretation of uh, what the third party um, said. And, um, and, and um, the uh, lawyer asked the question uh, again and the person uh, answered it the same way and my interpretation was the same. So this person for the second time objected to my interpretation and the uh, uh, lawyer for the third time asked the same question to the third party and the answer was the same. And my interpretation was exact, exactly the same. Uh, and the person still um, objected to my interpretation trying to give his version of uh, uh, interpreting of uh, what was said. And finally, the lawyer uh, said, uh, thank you very much. I got the idea. So I'm not there to uh, argue with anyone. 
I'm not there to teach that person a lesson. I'm not there to prove anything to any uh, of the uh, parties involved. I'm there to interpret. If I know that uh, what I interpreted is correct, I will stand by my uh, interpretation. I will not get into any um, um, arguments uh, or discussions with any uh, of the parties. Uh, so I think I did a good job there. Um, give interpretation in the same level of language, uh, which is called register, used in the uh, original. Render faithfully all slang, vulgar expressions, expletives, and uh, fall language. Uh, if a person is angry, um, you cannot be interpreting that by um, uh, um, smiling, um, obviously. Um, but you know, if a person is sad, of course, um, you need to be interpreting um, consistent with the atmosphere. Now, of course, uh, we're not asking you to cry with the uh, client or um, get angry with the client, but you have to uh, pay attention to uh, the register uh, of the conversation. And there are the times um, there will be um, slang words, vulgar expressions, expletives, and foul language. We have to um, interpret everything because um, all the parties uh, involved have a right to know what is being said. Be neutral and um, impartial in your interpretation. Your opinions and emotions must not intrude. Um, this is sometimes difficult um, if um, for, for certain um, uh, colleagues. If that is the case, just uh, withdraw from the uh, assignment. Um, you have a right to uh, perform your um, job uh, comfortably. If you feel that um, you cannot stay neutral or impartial, um, don't do it. Uh, if fatigue or other indispositions affect your interpreting ability, inform the administrator and uh, um, uh, request um, that um, uh, you are given time to uh, recover and re uh, a recess maybe, but um, do not uh, try to continue uh, when you don't have the capacity to um, continue. Um, now, uh, some general guidelines. Uh, you're an interpreter, not a lawyer. Do not give legal advice. Um, interpreting for people in uh, court situations, uh, clients most of the time um, consider you the main person to uh, go to, which is not true. And uh, most of the time they call you uh, um, after the session or they approach you uh, after uh, the session and they ask you questions. Uh, even if you know the answer, you're not there to give legal advice. You are a language professional and you have to keep that in mind and do not give legal advice. Maintain neutrality, do not act as a referral service for a lawyer. Um, this is very crucial too. And um, uh, in, in uh, one or two cases, um, on the insistence of a, a third party, I um, referred um, a person to a lawyer. Well, that was a big mistake, I tell you. Um, and uh, this person uh, would call me uh, every time um, he couldn't get a hold of his uh, lawyer. Well, uh, I was trying to help him find a lawyer, but uh, it was a mistake. Uh, I, I acknowledge that and, uh, and I, I will never do that again. Uh, so um, you're not a, a referral service. Uh, you're an interpreter. Let people find their own lawyer um, when they need one. Maintain a professional, professionally detached relationship with the person for whom you are interpreting. Never accept uh, gratuities. Um, um, you interpret for this person, there is a lunch break, they offer to take you to lunch or um, they offer to um, buy you um, coffee or, um, or dinner. Um, it is unacceptable. Uh, try to um, have a, a professional detached relationship with these people. Uh, once um, you are done, you simply um, 
uh, say goodbye and stay away from those people. Of course, you need to be polite. You don't need to be rude and you don't need to um, uh, run away from people, but explain your uh, principles to those people and let them know how to work with you. Do not discuss any case before anyone in which you are an interpreter. Now, interpreting is um, um, uh, can be overwhelming at times, especially you know, uh, the, um, the negative um, atmosphere uh, in certain situations um, impact us very um, badly. And we want to take it out of uh, um, our chest. Uh, but we must not talk uh, about uh, the particulars of that uh, case before anyone, um, no matter what, it is um, a privileged information, confidential information. Maintain the confidentiality of the official client uh, relationship. Keep confidential all matters heard while interpreting. Uh, evaluate, evaluate judiciously at all times your ability to deliver a professional and accurate interpretation. If you are faced with specialized terminology, dialectical forms, or regionalism, uh, which may impair your comprehension of the conversation, you may need to offer to withdraw from interpreting. Um, sometimes we are asked to interpret um, in uh, uh, languages similar to ours. Um, if we are not com um, comfortable, uh, we should refrain from doing that um, in the first place. <clears throat> However, uh, we might feel comfortable uh, at the beginning and then uh, eventually we might uh, notice that um, uh, it is um, beyond our capability to provide uh, a complete interpretation. If that is the case, explain the situation and withdraw from the uh, assignment. Interpreters are self-confident, outgoing, sociable, culturally sensitive and reliable language professionals. Professional interpreters are self-confident, outgoing, sociable, cultural sensitive, and culturally sensitive and reliable language professionals. You have to keep that in mind and introduce yourself in such way that people can um, appreciate your um, professional skills. Um, I like this um, uh, drawing um, in, uh, um, in a couple of different um, aspects. Um, it says everyone carries two invisible flags. One is red, the other one is green. Uh, green is uh, for positive, red is for uh, negative feedback. Um, so we all have these flags and, um, and they are invisible no matter who is um, holding them. When you do a good job, um, people without really showing it, they raise the uh, green flag. And when you uh, do uh, a job that is not so good, uh, I can assure you that they will raise the red flag. So try, just consider, keep in mind that uh, those flags are um, available all the time and people hold those flags and make sure that you get the right flag um, uh, after you provided your services. Um, we, as part of uh, the uh, requirement by the Society of Translators, we have to um, maintain um, our language skills and uh, continue to uh, improve. So, um, um, using the language portal of Canada is one way to um, maintain and improve our language skills. Uh, there's a ton of information uh, here. Um, subscribing um, to their language newsletter uh, is um, uh, good advice, um, I believe. Um, you, you get occasional uh, emails about um, different aspects of the language. It's, it's very, very informative. Um, I'd love it uh, uh, to tell you the truth. And um, there are some translation interpretation portals that you might want to create um, a free account at first. Um, some of them uh, offer paid um, accounts and they uh, claim that uh, paid accounts um, get more 
um, contact. Um, it's up to you, uh, but um, if you are a professional interpreter, uh, it would be good to have uh, professional appearance online rather than um, just your uh, Facebook or Instagram accounts. Uh, Critical Link uh, is an organization that provides a lot of support uh, to um, community interpreting. Um, there is a ton of information on their website. I would recommend that you visit and uh, uh, review the information here. And I have some other um, useful resources uh, here for you to um, uh, spend some time. Um, and you know what? Um, uh, the information on these websites um, uh, is um, um, uh, updated every now and then. So it's always good to um, go and check what's available. Um, Mosaic um, is a settlement agency uh, in Vancouver uh, that also provides uh, translation interpretation uh, assignments. Uh, you can contact them uh, to um, offer your services, uh, especially in rare languages. Um, they are very interested in um, uh, new um, uh, interpreters joining their team. Uh, it's again a nonprofit um, organization, um, mostly uh, serving the um, uh, newcomers. Uh, it's a good place to. Um, um, seek um, um, work and um, also provincial language service um, provides um, interpretation in uh, the healthcare system. Uh, if you want to operate in uh, the healthcare system, uh, uh, provincial language services is the right place to go. Uh, They're always in need of interpreters the reason why they uh, are always in need of um, interpreters is because they pay very little. And um, once um, an interpreter uh, is accredited and um, establishes uh, himself or herself, they don't want to work for that little money. But it's good um, to gain um, experience. I did uh, work with them uh, for a while um, uh, and I learned a lot. Uh, through my work with them. So it's recommendable. And finally, for medical interpreters, this is an, um, a, a very, very good uh, website with a ton of uh, useful information. Um, uh, I would definitely go to this uh, website and uh, learn and improve my language skills if I am uh, going to uh, interpret in um, uh, medical settings. And finally, if you need more information, you can always contact um, the Kelowna Community Resources or um, me directly. Um, uh, our uh, email addresses are here, and I will be happy to answer your questions um, uh, within my capacity. Thank you. And if you have any questions right now, I will be happy to answer them uh, as well. I just wanted to say thank you. Actually, um, I think the main questions arrived in when you began to do the job. I mean, when you began to translate. I myself have been teaching for 20 some years in linguistics. And I have worked with different uh, people from different countries. So always uh, somehow I was with, with translating, but and I was teaching actually okay. translation courses, but I have never been a professional translator myself. I mean, having the, the, the I mean the license for that. So sometimes I think that may I should go for this because I'm very new to Kelowna actually to Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, so but sometimes I think that may be very late for me. <laughs> I yeah, should younger people begin that try that. But I didn't love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> uh, to tell you the truth, um, um, I studied languages myself. Um, I studied to be a teacher of um, German. Um, simultaneously, I learned English. And um, I, um, from early age, I knew that I loved languages. And uh, without anyone asking me, I translated uh, a lot of things, uh, short stories, um, several books, uh, again, nobody asked me. I was enjoying, um, uh, and and I 
um, still do. And uh, so uh, from um, uh, early age, I knew that I wanted to be, um, uh, I wanted to translate. Let's, I, I should be honest. Um, I didn't know there was a profession uh, or there was professional, uh, there was a prof professional opportunity to uh, become a translator. But I just enjoyed doing that. And that's why I was, um, I did well at the university. And then um, I did well in, uh, uh, in the profession. And, and when I came to Canada, um, I noticed that uh, it is very well uh, institutionalized, unlike my own country. Um, I uh, finished the university. I took my diploma to a notary public or to several notary publics. I showed them uh, my credentials and they uh, signed me up for uh, sworn um, translation and interpretation. Um, you know, they didn't know how well um, qualified I was and they never knew how well I performed my um, services but they uh, signed me up no matter what. Um, coming to Canada, I discovered that um, it's very well uh, organized, it's institutionalized. There is a society that um, uh, provides guidance um, and promotes the language um, services uh, the, the, the members um, uh, provide. So, it's it's very well institutionalized here. So, um, but of course there are certain uh, requirements. Yes, um, we appreciate um, your previous experience uh, and it's important and crucial, um, uh, but it needs to be um, verifiable. So you need to do some translation. Um, in certain languages, Canada's um, official languages, French and English, um, you have to provide 110,000 words of experience before you join the society. Uh, in um, um, Chinese, Punjabi, um, and, and um, some other uh, common languages, uh, it's 80,000 words. And in all other languages, it is 30,000 words. So um, it doesn't have to be uh, a paid um, assignment. Uh, it can be a volunteer assignment. All you need is someone to um, attest to your experience um, a reference uh, letter saying that you translated 30,000 words. Uh, that said, uh, 13,000 words is actually just the minimum to join the society, to qualify to join the society as well as a degree in languages, linguistics. Uh, for the certification exam, um, it's crucial that you uh, build more experience and accumulate more word counts. Um, I uh, have been translating um, a lot in the last several weeks. And uh, some of the documents that I translate are very, very uh, difficult court documents. And I um, noticed that I can tackle those difficult assignments um, very quickly now. Um, in the past, it would take me several days to translate um, uh, one assignment. Now I can do the same assignment in a couple of hours. Uh, it's because I'm not becoming a genius, it's because uh, I have built um, uh, experience and um, my, my vocabulary is up to date and I refer to uh, the dictionary uh, less frequently and um, I do a better job um, uh, now than before. So the certification exam uh, is one that requires that kind of uh, experience and expertise because in three hours you have to translate uh, 400 words uh, without using online dictionaries um, when it comes to um, uh, translation certification and in um, interpretation uh, certification exams you have you have no um, way to resort to um, dictionaries uh, so you have to um, understand everything um, um, in memory. So 
uh, being prepared is important. Thank you so much. Should I have another question? Sure. I mean, imagine that I go to translate, does it happen for me? For example, I have I went to medical um, situations and translate for someone. In my language, my mother tongue is Persian, so I usually translate from English to Persian for the people that come here. And uh, but how we can calculate the number of words that I have uh, translated? You mean you told that for the exam you need at least thirty thousand maybe words you have translated, you have interpreted. So yeah, interpretation uh, interpretation is different. Um, you are uh, expected to um, uh, provide. Uh, experience in uh, interpreting hours, not word count. Uh, however, um, to join the society, um, you first need to um, provide 30,000 words. No matter what you did, um, interpretation or translation, they expect you to uh, have uh, enough uh, experience in uh, written um, uh, language. Uh, so when you join the society, um, uh, if you um, are, um, if you hold a uh, degree in languages linguistics, and if you can provide um, the necessary uh, word count or uh, interpreting hours, you may be admitted to the society uh, on dossier by just taking the uh, ethics exam. However, if you don't have um, a degree in languages linguistics, but you do have experience. Um, in uh, translating and or interpreting, uh, you may still be considered for membership, but you need to go through their admission exam. So whether you are an interpreter or a translator, uh, in a situation like that, without a degree in languages, you have to take a written exam. So you have to have that knowledge. Um, the, uh, the excuse that I saying that I um, only interpreted, I never translated, doesn't work. You are expected to be knowledgeable uh, in written language as well as um, the, the verbal um, language. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are very welcome. Any other questions? I guess not. So would you would you like me to share the the polls that uh, Sabrina had set up? Is yes, that what happens please. now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, if there is no question uh, for me, I can um, say goodbye to everyone and um, and and thank you very much to um, um, KCR um, for organizing um, this event. Uh, we have done seven uh, presentations. Um, I hope uh, the participants and the institution uh, found um, my information useful. And if I can be of further assistance uh, in any way, uh, please feel free to contact me and I'll be uh, extremely happy to um, um, help out in any way I can. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you again. You're welcome, Farouk. It's been a pleasure to, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure um, interacting with you. And Thank feel you so free, much. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, feel free to contact me if you have further questions. So, sure. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay. I'll say goodbye and, and I wish everyone um, a, a wonderful uh, day and a week ahead. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, okay, should we now answer here? If you'd like to answer the, the test questions, you can go ahead. And then there's just a, a short um, little survey after this. So I can see when, if you wanted to answer these questions just as a test, uh, the, the sample test questions, you can go ahead or you can you can um, decline if you if you don't want to, to do that at this point. Uh, if I no, I'm I'm interested to do that. How much time I have for that? Um, as much as you want. I think there's just six questions, so you can just take your time, and I'll leave it up until I see that you've completed it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, no, no, no rush. Thank you. Thank you.